What's going on, Fight Fans? Ben the Bane Davis back here, and let's just get right into it. Sean Strickland wants the rematch. He makes the case for DDP versus Strickland, too. And I'll say this. I was a little bit um, surprised it wasn't booked for UFC 300. I felt like that was a logical move, considering that, you know, we needed a main event. Sean Strickland's got so much momentum in the mixed martial arts sphere and fan base. Um, and it was, a, it was a highly contested defeat, you know, a split decision for a title that will always warrant discussion on running it back just to get a more definitive, um, you know, answer, right, to who's the better martial artist. But, I, I mean, I kind of want to contest it wasn't that great of a title fight. Uh, if you rewatch it, um, and, and feel free to think differently, you know, everybody's fights are subjective. Everybody likes different things, and because I didn't really – have much uh, connection or tie to either fighter or dog in the race. Uh, when I watched it, I was just like, eh, yeah, it was a five round fight, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Was the first fight good? Do you want to see a rematch? Either way, let's get right into it. So here's the article from MMA Junkie. This was from Mike Bond, the goat himself. Um, and, and Strickland says Dana White himself thought I won. So the pair dueled in Toronto at UFC 297, and Sean Strickland loses the belt via split decision. His first attempt at title defense after winning it off of Israel Adesanya in what was the upset of the year, in my opinion, uh, of 2023, immediately drops the belt to Drikus Duplessis, who 7-0 in the UFC, 21-2 overall in mixed martial arts. I mean, it is just bonkers to me that he has blitzed his way through 185 and captured the title. <laughs> you know, if you watch his his fights with Brad Tavares, I mean, if you watch that fight with Darren Till where Darren had some good moments and came back certainly in the second round and uh, was doing okay in the third before he was submitted, it just seemed like this was a guy who um, – was the perfect fade opportunity. And what I mean by that is you keep betting against him because eventually it's going to cash. And it just hasn't, you know. You look at his skill set, and obviously before he got the deviated septum surgery, there were some cardio questions and just the deep breaths he would take at points in fights made me think, oh, this guy's going to get smoked by the top of the division. And then he murdered Robert Whitaker, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I got to stop betting against this guy. Um, but, yeah, so here's Sean Strickland on Wednesday saying, you know, I don't care about fight politics or a belt, but it makes me laugh. They gave Izzy a rematch to Alex after getting slept. I lost a close decision that Dana himself thought I won. Everyone did. The stats did. That needs to be run back. It got 14,000 likes, and this was yesterday. I mean, he has – captured this this zeitgeist of um, mixed martial arts attention and appeal from the fan base and props to him. I mean, this is how you play the game. You get the fans on your side and that will ultimately open the doors uh, that, that otherwise might not be available. I do want to add that Adesanya was a, a massive pay-per-view star. I mean, he headlined uh, I think a dozen or so pay-per-views, defended the belt many times, was approaching consensus greatest of all time middleweight status, and then was slept by Alex Perea, a guy who, you know, he had an existing rivalry with. There was a story there. Um, so there, there were a lot of reasons why Israel Adesanya got the rematch, not just uh, what Sean Strickland is reducing it to. Um but in his credit, you know, I lost a close decision that day and himself that I won. Everyone did. The stats did. So let's take it to the stats and see if it's supported. And when you look through it, Sean Strickland outstrikes him in round number one, 34 to 18. Uh, Trick is Duplessis, bounce back in round two, 26 to 22, 31 to 29, 33 to 29, and 53 to 35. So Strickland is correct in Again, reducing the scoring metric of the fight to simply the striking statistics in which he did outland DDP four to one rounds. What I want to bring up is the target. You know, he is a headhunter. 90% of the strikes up to the head and DDP significantly more varied with, you know, majority of strikes going to the head, but a healthy diversity going to the body and the legs. And additionally, the takedowns, 6 for 11 on takedowns for two minutes of control time, 54% completion rate, um, wh which I think did help edge. I mean, it helped give a little bit more control, a little bit more of an edge in some of these closer rounds because the striking stats weren't exactly massively swung to Strickland. There were only two rounds where, you know, he had a, 
a, a pretty big edge, which was round one, you know, where there was a 16 strike difference and round number five in which there was nearly a 20 strike differential, you know, for, for in favor of Strickland, excuse me. So, you know, I, I see what Sean's saying in the warping and twisting that he does, um, but I'm not sure if, you know, it, it's as simple as Sean Strickland makes it seem. Um, but yeah, you know, D- Duplessis fight tied two two going to the fifth, and then he scored that fifth round for Strickland, and that's a completely fair scorecard. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that um, you know Sean Strickland lost that fight uh, without debate, and De Chris Duplessis won it without debate. It certainly is a fight where you could watch it and come away with um, different scoring, right? You could see Derek Cleary, Eric Cullen, and Sal Diamato forty eight forty seven. Um, two for DDP, one for Sean Strickland. So I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, it was you know clearly for this person. It's a little bit of a debate. It was a very close fight and one that I would like to see run back. Uh, let's take it to the middleweight rankings, though, just to see. So obviously the champ, Dricus Duplessis, number one, Sean Strickland. Number two, Israel Adesanya. Three, Robert Whitaker. Four, Jared Cannonier. Five, Marvin Vittori. Marvin Vittori and Brendan Allen are squaring off soon, so boom off the table. Uh, Robert Whitaker just defeated Paolo Costa, so I'm, I'm imagining that there's going to be a little bit of a recovery time um, before he hops back in there. And then I think the fight that makes a lot of sense for Robert Whitaker um, could be either Sean Strickland or... Or Jared Cannonier. Jared Cannonier is on a bit of a tear right now. Um, you know, props to him. I think he's won his last three or four fights. Excuse me, his last two fights. So beat Sean Strickland and then just uh, poured it on Marvin Vittori. Made Marvin Vittori look like a literal meatball. Um, so he's got some steam, and I'd like to see you know him get another crack maybe at Robert Whitaker, even though that fight wasn't exactly close. It's just limited options, right? It's such a narrow top of 185 with some of these guys having already fought once, sometimes twice. I mean, Adesanya <laughs> fought Whitaker, um, I believe, two occasions, fought Jared Cannonier, uh, Marvin Vittori on two occasions, uh, a, a rematch with Stron- Sean Strickland if they run that one back. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I think that... What would be interesting is, God, it's it's going to be a rematch either way you cut the cake for Adesanya. If you do Adesanya Whitaker again, which would be fun, I think their second fight was a lot closer. Um, I think I think some people scored it for Whitaker, you know. Uh, so Adesanya Whitaker three, Adesanya Cannoneer two, uh, Strickland Whitaker. I I think is interesting, or you just run the rematch straight as is, right? DDP versus Strickland again, which I think could do pretty well pay-per-view wise i mean sean strickland is announcing himself as this star he is kind of gripping the tails of the ufc demographic in a lot of different ways politically culturally and and tying them around himself and making this cape of (laughs) you know of of non-pc of uh you know non-woke and that's worked for him you know again it's it's all about how you play the game so i don't know i mean i i the ufc attempted to put duplessis against adesanya for the ufc 300 main event in april so clearly the ufc's headspace and thinking maybe isn't on the rematch right ddp and um sean strickland too isn't what the ufc is thinking and again adesanya is a pay-per-view star as well so i think there's a lot of interesting ways to cut the cake at 185 but um, I just think it's a little bit more complex than Sean Strickland reducing it in this manner. Uh, let's let's actually head to Twitter here and see what some of uh, the responses were. <clears throat> yeah, Brian, because of what you said at the press conference, Sean, they wanted you uh, out of being champ in a close fight. I knew they would rob you, Sean Strickland. Facts. Um, let's see. The UFC alien. Amanda, I want to pull this card, but when does the champ ever lose a close fight when you're in Canada with a bunch of dirty leftists? Um, I mean, again, you know, this is it's it's classic Sean Strickland right now where he's really leaning into kind of the political side of things. And it, it you can see there's a whole audience and fan base, especially with how the UFC's kind of maneuvered and positioned themselves, that will side with Sean in those conversations. Uh, whenever he uses those buzzwords and those hot hot topics, um, you know he's going to get a huge audience on his side. Um, I do think it is interesting that you know he doesn't. It, you know Sean Strickland doesn't really talk about the fact that you know he did lose to Jared Cannonier. And again, that was a um, 
split decision, a very close fight as well. If we go to the striking stats, um, I mean, 16-13, 25-28, 33-35, 27-33, 40-43. I mean, that is like a difference of three to six strikes per round. That's bananas how close of a fight this was. And I know it maybe wasn't as interesting as some other fights. In my mind, it almost would make sense to run this back a little bit more than the um, title fight, right? Because, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <sighs> let me know what I think. I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm just thinking out loud what to do with former champion Sean Strickland. If they do book the rematch for the belt, DDP versus Strickland too, I think that's fine. Um, again, it was a, a really closely contested split decision. 40, 48, 47, uh, twice on one side, and then 48, 47 on the other. So I, I wouldn't mind if they ran it back for more definitive uh, of an answer, but I think there's a lot of other ways to cut the cake. So let me know what you guys would do. If you were Dana White and Hunter Campbell, or excuse me, not Hunter Campbell, Sean Strickland, uh, excuse, no, <laughs> Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard, uh, what would you guys do at the top of 185? How would you book uh, Sean Strickland and Drake's Duplessis? Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.